The MCU continues to give us amazing villain after amazing villain, and it set a high bar for whoever decides to show up and cause chaos for our heroes next. But what are some powerful MCU villains we haven't seen yet? Sure, this list is going to mention the big ones like Doctor Doom and Galactus, but stick around and I'll throw in some other insanely strong and interesting villains that I think need a live action introduction. I'll be breaking down where we could see these villains pop up and what heroes they could fight. Ready? Let's get started right now. Whenever there's a list of powerful villains we all want to see in the MCU, Doctor Doom is usually at the top, and there's a reason for that. No. Even though he doesn't actually have a PhD, Doctor Doom is one of the most popular Marvel villains ever, and the fact that we've had two live-action attempts that have both completely floundered has only made us more impatient for a version of the Latvian dictator to show up in the MCU. There's just something so interesting about the guy. He's like an evil blend of both Tony Stark and Stephen Strange, which is such a dangerous combination. He's a brilliant inventor and has a genius intellect, but he also isn't afraid to dabble in the mystic arts from time to time. So we haven't seen him yet in the MCU, and the question becomes just where should he pop up first? The obvious answer would be in a Fantastic Four movie, since he is primarily known as being their greatest antagonist. But I just don't think that works. Probably the better option is that he's an antagonist in a Black Panther movie first, as the idea of Latveria and Wakanda at war with each other would make an excellent basis for a movie. But also, again, Doom can work anywhere. I mean, there's one storyline where he has to reluctantly team up and work with Kang the Conqueror, so imagine if the MCU goes that I'm route. Not trespassing on Latverian soil. Galactus is the very definition of power. Anyone who can put eats planets on a resume definitely should not be underestimated. And we haven't seen Galactus yet in the MCU, but arguably behind Doctor Doom, the Devourer of Worlds is someone who needs to be included in the MCU eventually. So the question I'll ask, like everyone on this list, is where should he show up? Yes, also like Doom, he's traditionally a Fantastic Four villain, but since his debut, he's morphed into an everyone threat and is one of the most important cosmic characters. Maybe the best method would be to tease him in a Fantastic Four movie and then set him up to be the big bad for everyone going forward. Not only would that create some awesome stories, but it would also position the new Fantastic Four as vital to this next big phase, which is great for us in the long run. The question is, do you think he'll keep his backstory? With the way the MCU adapts things like making Ego the living planet a celestial, I've often thought that they'll just make Galactus another celestial for ease, but I hope not. Maybe you can introduce him in the next Eternals movie as the threat that the Celestials are all scared of? My power is limitless. You have to wonder what the MCU thought when the whole Mephisto backlash started in WandaVision. I mean... WandaVision was the first MCU show, so the studio got to see how audiences would react to teases and Easter eggs, and watch us all work each other up in a frenzy with our wild theories. Boner. There's no way they could have predicted the internet would be so adamant that Mephisto was going to show up, right? But I mean, it's their fault there were so many teases. But the fact that Marvel's Devil did not end up making an appearance has now created the running joke about how Mephisto is going to show up everywhere. But what's going to happen when he actually does? The funniest thing ever would be if he shows up in a completely random place we never expect. Like, what if he randomly shows up in Miss Marvel? Our jaws would drop. The great thing about Mephisto is that he can work in just about any MCU movie as he can appear to our heroes and grant them their deepest wishes at a severe cost. But if I had to pick one hero who would be most visually interesting to fight, it would have to be Doctor Strange at this point. Doctor Strange's battle with Mephisto in a later movie could open the door to more supernatural elements and paved the way for heroes like Ghost Rider. If the MCU is ever able to coax Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back for another Spidey team-up movie, then there would need to be a solid reason for all of them to meet up um, again. I hope it's okay, I just came through this, uh... I mean, sure, I guess you don't need a great reason, as we as an audience would probably watch any story with the three of them. Like, who needs world-ending threats when you could have a whole movie about Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker finally healing enough to marry his version of MJ, and he invites the two other Peters to be his groomsmen? Wacky wedding shenanigans wouldn't 
Golden Sue. Come on, tell me you wouldn't watch that movie. Anyways, if they need an actual threat to fight, then Morlin would be the perfect one to reunite them. He's the main villain in the Spider-Verse comic series, and he jumps around different universes, sucking the life force from all the spider totems. Yes, it would be a little similar to the animated Spider-Verse movies, but if it was a chance to see all three Peters hang out again, I think we would all be okay with it, right? Both can exist. That's the beauty of the multiverse. MODOK may seem like a bit of a joke because he's kind of silly with his all-head design and floating bodysuit, but he's incredibly intelligent, extremely dangerous, and could provide an excellent foil for a hero in an MCU movie. And you know what I think? I think MODOK should be a villain in Sam Wilson's Captain America 4. To me, the two would just have a fun dynamic. Sam Wilson on his own doesn't have a whole huge gallery of popular rogues, so they should bring in a fan-favorite bad guy for him to do battle with. Yeah. MODOK seems like the mad scientist type that would have a problem with the world around him and would go to extreme measures to change it, which does offer a parallel to Sam's character arc as the new Cap. But are there other places MODOK could pop up? I guess you could make the case that he'd be an interesting Armor Wars villain, but again, putting him up against the new Captain America would be the best choice in my opinion. And is it possible to get Patton Oswalt to voice him? Man, if you haven't seen the animated MODOK show, go do that right now. It's great. Uh, yeah, about that. Whenever the X-Men make their grand introduction, they're going to need a powerful villain to fight. Yeah, sure, they could go the Magneto route again, but I'm hoping they bring in a baddie we haven't ever seen in live action, but has been teased a few times. Mr. Sinister is a master of both genetic engineering and rocking fancy capes. Two very important <laughs> things in my book. I was right. He's a powerful villain that acts as a perfect foil for the X-Men thanks to his belief in engineering a perfect race of superhumans. We saw his name pop up over in the Fox franchise, but never got to see that pay off. But with his introduction in the MCU, he could finally make his long-awaited debut. The thing I'm wondering is whether Mr. Sinister is a one-movie type of baddie or a franchise villain. He's powerful enough where it could go either way. He's both a brainy and a brawny villain thanks to his genetic upgrades and could cause a ton of trouble for our favorite mutants. The Maestro is an evil future version of the Hulk, and I think his introduction is the exact thing the Hulk storyline in the MCU needs right now. Yes, this is the part of the video where I lament the fact that Bruce Banner and Hulk have been underutilized and mistreated in the MCU. I know, I do this a lot, but you know what would stop all my complaining? Maestro. Think of what Maestro could do for Hulk's arc in the MCU. Besides that one freak out in Age of Ultron, we haven't really gotten to showcase the destructive powers that Hulk can unleash upon the world. And with Maestro, it allows the MCU to have its cake and eat it too. By introducing a future evil version of the Hulk, we can see a version of the character unleash his true potential and showcase just how terrifying he can really be while all the heroes struggle to stop him but do so in a way that doesn't make a villain out of our Bruce Banner and Hulk. They could even tweak it by saying Maestro comes from a different universe compared to an alternate future and have that fit in with the whole multiverse vibe the MCU is going for right now. At the end of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, we got a classic post credit sequel tease that hinted that the mysterious origin of the rings would be the basis for the next film. Comic fans know that the rings originally came from the McLuhans, a dragon-like alien race. And arguably the most famous McLuhan is Fin Fang Foom. Now, normally Fin Fang Foom is an Iron Man villain, but it wouldn't be hard to tweak the backstory to have the villain repurposed into a Shang-Chi antagonist. Shang-Chi is used to fighting big dragon-like creatures now, so it makes sense. The character just fits much easier into Shang-Chi's current character arc than anything to do with Iron Man. Can you imagine if Iron Man 2 had Tony fighting a big dragon alien? That would have been weird. I mean, I guess it would have been a better version of Iron Man 2 compared to the one we got though, so I guess that wouldn't be all bad. But anyways, tying a Fin Fang Foom into Shang-Chi's quest to understand the Ten Rings makes the most sense. Magus is an evil future version of Adam Warlock, a character who's set to make his debut in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. You really can't have Adam Warlock without Magus. It's a huge element in what makes the character interesting, but the real question is, just how will the franchise incorporate Magus? Will they ignore him completely? Will they build up Adam Warlock's character across multiple movies and then reveal his evil future version of himself? Or will we get Magus almost right away and he'll be the main villain of Guardians 3? It's also 
also tough because the new version of Adam Warlock will have his backstory tweaked since he's now a creation of Aisha and the Sovereign. There's a lot of options, but really it all comes back to making Adam Warlock an important character. It was weird seeing the Infinity War arc play out without Adam at its center as he was vital to it in the comics, but I understand why things worked out that way. Now that the Infinity Saga is complete, how could Adam and Magus shake things up in the MCU? I know this list is about powerful villains, but I still wanted to give Bullseye a special shout-out. Because yes, Bullseye up against almost anyone else on this list would be a pretty one-sided fight, but he's still one of the best street-level antagonists around. He's the man that can hit anything with anything. And overall, there's a big question of whether they would bring the Netflix version of the character back after we just saw the returns of Charlie Cox's Daredevil and Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. Season 3 of Daredevil had the massive cliffhanger with the character undergoing that experimental treatment to fix his shattered spine and coming out of it enhanced, so it would be weird if the MCU just dropped in a new version of the character to fight Charlie Cox's Daredevil. And the great thing about the character is that he could fight a bunch of different heroes. Yes, he's a perfect Daredevil and antagonist, but he could also go up against Echo in her upcoming show, against Spider-Man if he's more street level now, Yelena if the two cross paths, or even against That's Moon Knight it. down the all line. Right, time out. See, Bullseye is an all-purpose villain, so let's start using him. The Lord of the Negative Zone deserves a live-action debut. Annihilus is a conqueror and a tyrant who just wants to live long enough to see Morbius 2 come out, which is code for saying he's going to be waiting a very long time. As mentioned, he rules over the negative zone, and he's always looking over at our normal universe with envy and hate. There's the famous comic storyline called Annihilation, which sees Annihilus cross over to our world with a whole Palpatine-level amount of warships to basically wipe out everything. It's a massive battle, and if the MCU could make an Avengers movie out of it, then that'd be pretty cool. Like, let's say Kang the Conqueror is the new Thanos-level overarching big bad for the next few phases. Well, the individual phases need to end on big villains, right? That's where Annihilus and the Annihilation storyline can come into play. It would be a way to unite both the cosmic side and the Earthbound Avengers into another huge fight. We know Blade is coming soon to the MCU, and it would be weird if we didn't see any vampires come along with him. I mean, Blade is a vampire hunter. Can't really do that if there are no vampires around. And who would be the biggest, baddest vampire you could introduce in the MCU? That's right, it's Dr. Michael Morbius at your service. Just kidding, Blade would cut off Morbius' head before Morbius could even utter the words, but what about the Sinister Six? I'm talking about Dracula, the most famous vampire of all time. If we're getting Blade in the MCU and he's going to have a meaningful storyline, then let's get dark and spooky by introducing Dracula for him to battle with. You don't get any more powerful than Dracula from a vampire perspective. I mean, we're getting Werewolf by Night soon, we have mummies thanks to Moon Knight, why couldn't Dracula Dracula pop up. It's the best option for Blade moving forward. But I guess there's another option too. That fake meme that's always spread around where Moon Knight calls Dracula a nerd and demands money is legendary, and although that didn't happen for real, it totally should now. So make Moon Knight and Dracula meet up, please. Are you crying? A bit. Okay, this one is only for sentimental reasons. I want to see the Scorpion in live action. I say that because I feel like we got a bit robbed. Spider-Man Homecoming teased a Scorpion transformation with Matt Gargan teaming up with Adrian Toomes, but you can tell that plans changed. Yeah, just roll it back to last Friday. But that idea was disproven thanks to the Sonyverse, which stole Tombs from our timeline and placed him in a whole other universe with a dumb explanation. So now, where does that leave Scorpion? There's still a chance he shows up in Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4, but I'm not really holding my breath. I love Mangog's backstory and totally think he could fit with a new Thor movie. In the comics, Mangog is the physical manifestation of the hatred of a billion beings that were slaughtered by Odin back when he was a tyrant. I think that's cool. Imagine all of our collective hate for Star-Lord in the moment where he punches Thanos in the face while they're trying to get the Infinity Gauntlet off of him, and then that hate turns him into a beast that runs wild. That's basically Mangog and he still works in the MCU. The Thor movies have loved to explore the idea of Odin's past as a bad guy coming back to haunt Thor, and this would be another way to do that. He could even factor into Thor Love and Thunder. I mean, Gore the God Butcher hates gods. Mangog is the physical manifestation of hate. It's a match made in heaven. For the last entry, I wanted to talk about a villain that's powerful enough to unite a version of the Midnight Suns. 
And the best option for that is Lilith, aka the mother of all demons. We know that Lilith is traditionally known as the first wife of the biblical Adam, so you know she's been around the block a bit. Normally in the comics, she's an enemy to Ghost Rider, and if the spirit of vengeance ever gets another solo project, then Lilith should be the big bad demon he has to face. But what I would like to see is that since she's so powerful, Ghost Rider has to recruit people like Blade, the Black Knight, and Moon Knight together in order to stop her. Featuring a big bad demon villain that's as powerful as Lilith, but maybe not as famous as Mephisto, opens the door to a supernatural and demonic side of the MCU we haven't seen before. The actors wouldn't do it, so I didn't include it, but how jaw-dropping would it be if RDJ and Chris Evans returned to play evil Superior Iron Man and evil Hydra Captain America? And what if they teamed up? Would our brains implode or explode from excitement? Tough to say. 